All right. Today I'm going to be interviewing my friend Warnament. <laughs> I think I'm going to put this on my blog, actually. Okay, now I'm going to record this for um. I was gonna, I was gonna use that P word that makes things permanent. Posterity. Yeah, because I was thinking propensity, <laughs> and then I was like preposterous, and actually it might be more preposterous. But very preposterous. Very preposterous. Um, this is Warnament, and he is my friend and an important person in my life, and he is also in book three of um. What what do I write? <laughs> blood ties. Of blood ties, the blood ties series. And see, so you made the camera shake. Somebody's gonna have a seizure. Um, uh, Good. I'm glad that I'm having a seizure. Oh, you're evil. <laughs> anyway, so he's he's gonna be in that of like he's in that book, book three of blood ties. Like Max and Bella kill him to death. Okay. <laughs> Would you rather be tortured and live through it, or be killed and put out of your misery and all any lasting after effects immediately after? I think I'd rather be tortured and live through it because then I'd still be alive. Yeah, but then you would brag all the time about how, because I know you, and you would like be like, well, there's one time when I was tortured. There's one time at band camp I got waterboarded. I wonder what that, okay, here's another hard-hitting question. What's that policeman doing outside my window? Is he actually outside the window? I mean the cops way down no, the road. No, the cops down the road. I mean, but they're outside the window. They're not inside the window way down the road. I, the outside I the defend. window means they're like right next well, to no, the window No, I defend my in. wording. <laughs> okay, I am a fully time writer. <laughs> I know you're a fully time writer. Fully time writer. Okay, so anyway. <laughs> yeah. But remember like that time that you called me Typhoid Mary and I won't pee in my pants? So that was yes, funny. I remember that. <laughs> yeah, that was pretty funny. Okay, so um this is my husband's camcorder and we're not supposed to be playing with it. Alright, what about the Osmonds? Do you think any of the Osmonds are gay? I think they're all gay. Yeah? Especially with those costumes they wear. I think that they're scary giant teeth monsters. <laughs> I feel like I'm that guy that James Lipton, I'm on that, that that show inside the actor's studio and he'll ask Meryl Streep a question and she'll talk for like 25 minutes about how brilliant she is and then he'll be like, that was effervescent. Like, that that actually, didn't do with the question I asked. I, I, don't, I don't think he even listens to them. I think he just tries to see how many new adjectives he can use in his answers. Well, it's like, okay, here's another question. Do you find the amount of Diet Coke I consume in a single day excessive? I find it alarming, yes. <laughs> I realize it's, it's diet, so it doesn't have as much sugar as regular pop. It doesn't have any sugar. It's still a lot of a um, synthetic substance that doesn't really... I mean, sure, it has a lot of caffeine to keep you going and maintain, keeping up with a um, young child, but... I'm drinking Diet Coke right now as he says this. <laughs> and the 12 ounce bottle that she just opened is already almost gone. <laughs> She's only had it open for a minute and a half. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> there are days when this is the, all she consumes is Diet Coke. Yeah. She doesn't even eat, she just drinks Diet Coke. So she can all <laughs> out. Some kind of mechanical pump attached to my heart. <laughs> and then, like, you can pour Diet Coke into it. <laughs> Just a straight bottle. And just right into the heart and it pumped, uh, did my body pump Diet Coke instead of blood? Well, you know they have those hats that you can put various beverages in and with a straw down your mouth. Would you want to wear one of those full of Diet Coke? I guess, but that comes nowhere near <laughs> the drama of the pump that goes directly to my heart. Okay, what's about a time when we were down at, um, the Kalamazoo Mall in Kalamazoo, Michigan. And it's this big outdoor pedestrian mall. Don't you push me into the pool? No, no. <laughs> there was a fountain, okay? And it's like talks about how the name Kalamazoo means boiling pot. Um, and uh, and speaking of which, if you ever have some pot, don't boil it. Um, <laughs> it does not make a pleasing <laughs> beverage. Um, so like there's this this fountain, and and the way that it's constructed, it's like this column, this big tall, probably about chest high column. And then there's like a little like metal bronze plate on each side describing the history of Kalamazoo and how it got its name from the Indians. Or, you know, like the, the American Indians, not like the people from India. Yeah. Well, anyway, the point of the matter is that there's this thing and at the top of it, since it was called boiling pot, the top of the fountain is shaped like a basin. And... Like, a, like, like, just like a, like a sink basin, almost. I think it probably just got it from Lowe's. And it's this perfectly round, like, bowl. And in the middle 
is like, and it's all full of water, and in the middle there's a pipe that's like, you know, putting the, the water up into it, and it's like the water in the, in the bowl is going over the sides tranquilly like an infinity pool, and then it's bubbling up like it's boiling, but it's not. It's actually very so cold. It's like a cup bubbling over. Right, like it's like, right. A, like a plentiful cup <clears throat> bubbling over. The cup runneth over all the time. Right. So I said to Warnerman, I said, that's really interesting. You should read that. <laughs> and indicated the bronze plaque on the side of the thing. And so he leaned down to read it. He leaned down. <laughs> and I put my hands. Make your hands like this. Show how I did it. I put my hands like this into the bowl. And I went whoosh. <laughs> and I emptied the fountain <laughs> onto his head. <laughs> and it was the best moment of my life until I had to start running because he was chasing me and he runs very fast and suddenly it was not a good time anymore but at the time it was a very good time wait just just for the readers to know this bottle has been open for less than five minutes it's already empty this is how much she loves Diet Coke See, if you ever want to give her a, a birthday gift or a Christmas gift or I love your books so much I have to give you a gift gift, you should send her like a pallet full of yeah, Diet Coke. Yeah, send like a 12 pack of Diet Coke to... Um, no, no, not a 12 pack, a <laughs> pallet. Well, yeah, but I a mean... A fully loaded if pallet everybody that buys, four No, but listen, if everybody that buys my book sends a pallet, <laughs> then that's almost unmanageable. Everybody's not like, you know, 12 pack. I'm not greedy. Send a 2 liter of Diet Coke with a bow on it. To Harlequin Enterprises. Um, and they will forward it to her. Send it to the New York office. <laughs> Care of me. Or send it to the Jane. <laughs> okay, so here's another hard hitting journalistic question. Um, why did I paint over painter's tape and leave it on my wall so that if I peel it up... I don't really know. I wasn't here. Oh, that wasn't actually the question. That was just an aside. I'm that was, but anyway, that's not the question I was going to ask you. The question I was going to ask you is, do you know how to sew? Slightly. And just for the readers to know, she is now drinking another bottle of this size. And she opened it and started drinking it like she was on a crack at it, getting her first hit in a, an hour. I have to eat, I have to drink Diet Coke constantly, or else I get real itchy. What's going on outside? Is still there? She's what? been there for like an hour. I don't know, now there's like back, there's like a traffic backup. Wait, let's go to this news report. Oops. And you break your I think it just apart. broke my counter. Holy cow, what's now happening? Now there's another, now there's a tow truck, and a police car, and a couple of other vehicles. Okay. Here, maybe... Okay. Hard-hitting journalistic news. Hey, Wade, what's happening? No, playing with Joe's camcorder, I'm going to be in big trouble. Speculate. Do some, so like, really irresponsible journalism and speculate what happened. I think somebody ran off the road and got stuck in a ditch. Because now there's that um, that wrecker out there, although I've never seen a wrecker that also has a plow on the front of it. But it appears to be a wrecker because it's got the lights on top. Mm. So I'm thinking somebody just lost it and without a new dish out of being towed, pulled out. You know what I think happened? They're on public road and that's why the, the cop is there. You know what I think this happened? What, what think I think happened? happened? I think that um, the neighbor three houses down was backing out of their driveway and wasn't looking and somebody hit him. That could also be. Okay. I like peanuts, I like almonds, I like cashews. I even like Brazil nuts. <laughs> like testicles. <laughs> Those are nuts. <laughs> what does Brazil nuts have to do with the testicles? Nothing, I'm just listing off the kind of nuts you like to have in your mouth. Okay. Oh! <laughs> Do you need some aloe for that wicked bird? But, um, but I like that about you because that means that you're considerate about people. Can I have some of your coke? <laughs> well, one minute, since Mr. Jen is home and we're about to get in like big, big trouble for using the camcorder, it is now time to, to end, end our interview. interview. It's been a pleasure being interviewing with you. It's All been right. Being interviewed. Run! Bye.